Okay, so welcome to the Voc Talk Cafe by uh, Les Apricots. And this is a place where we get to chat about teaching a trade. And just a word about this site, uh, this, this project and the website. So everything that you see is going to be accessible on the Apricot FP website. So there are, are the recordings to any previous meetings. This happens to be the first one for this sector. But as we move forward, as there's more, the recordings will be there. There are collaborative documents where we put the meetings agenda, the minutes, eventually archives of the previous years. There is, you can have the après cool calendar brought in directly into your calendar. And there's a little tutorial on how to do that. There's the attendance record and there's also the library of resources. So any resources that we share with each other will be posted in the library of resources. So the après cool FP website really is the hub of where all this information is going to be found. And a little word about this, this is a pilot project. So the implication and your participation is really, really important. And anything you have to say is definitely worth listening to. This is supposed to be a space for you as VT teachers. So we do want to hear your opinions. Today, we are dealing with sector one, which is administration, commerce, and computing support. And we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. And, and, and we'll go over this a little bit as setting this up is we want to look at what I'm teaching. How does that align with industry expectations? Because artificial intelligence is something that's moving a million miles an hour. How is that trade adapting? And how should I be teaching? Or what should I be teaching? Or should I be teaching it? So Mark and I are your hosts, along with Richard. Today's goals, we want to situate AI in relation to the trade using a small sample of like research and public literature. Uh, we want to discuss our perceptions about how this affects how we teach the trade. And we want to look at it through a curiosity lens. I'm going to be the first one to say I'm not an expert about this. I read. <laughs> I have my trade, which is professional cooking, which you'll see as nobody really knows what AI is going to do in professional cooking. But I really want to hear from you as experts in your trade. So those are the goals for today. The session is broken down into two parts. We have a 15 minute presentation where we're gonna just introduce the topic and some of the angles. Then we're gonna have a 45 minute discussion and then we're gonna come back and do a little in, a technology and teaching inspiration capsule. The first 15 minutes, the presentation part is recorded. The second part, the discussion part, is not recorded. And this is to give a safe space so everybody can talk. I do take notes during the meeting, and Mark takes notes as well. And you guys are all welcome to, to collaborate in the same document if you want. But since this is your first, first session, I'm not going to put that on anybody. And we do take notes in the meeting so we can pull out some of the key reflections. But we, really want, we don't want to record the discussion because we want to keep it as a safe space. So. Today, let's talk a little bit about artificial intelligence in office work. Let's call it that. <laughs> and so this came up because I was actually reading and you've seen it pop up quite a bit in the news about AI and how it's going to affect different trades and whatnot. So, and I, we, Mark and I discussed this, this would be really an interesting topic, but first let's Let's, what exactly is artificial intelligence? And like, there's a few different definitions of it. I mean, there's you know, the simplest definition is it's the intelligence of machines as opposed to humans, all right? And of course, then, well, what's intelligence? And that goes down another rabbit hole. And today, what it's come to mean is a lot of different stuff. So, and it really means, it's really going after this notion of clever tasks, you know, where it's, but clever tasks, but uh, going after different aspects of this. So there's the idea of human-centered AI, focusing on how to augment human performance and human capabilities. Um, you're looking at narrow AI. So this is very specific to like one thing. So when like we've all interacted with chat bots and that's a type of AI, right? So there's now different branches to this, but it's, it's the idea that machines are augmenting human performance. What it looks like in our life is 
all over the place right now. Anytime we use a web search, uh, anytime we have any device that's connected to the internet, when we're online shopping, uh, when, we, when we text somebody, hey, are you going on holidays to the Caribbean? And then all of a sudden our Facebook page is populated by trips to the Caribbean, that's AI. Uh, and our, our phones are pretty much AI, right? Everything inside our phones. And like I said, I'm not a secret, I'm not somebody from secretarial uh, commerce or computing support, but just looking at it, what does it look like in these office type trades? Well, what I found was ChatGPT is the one that, that, that everybody's using right now. And that process is text. There's Google Bard, which processes text and images. And that's kind of interesting. It's not available in Canada. And then there's Copilot, which is writes computer code. So it helps co computer programmers write quote code more quickly. So this does exist not only in our personal lives, but in, in the trade as well. So why are people talking about it? People are talking about it because it's changing the way we work. It's modifying the nature of certain jobs. So when we look at, you know, if anybody here has been using chat GPT, all of a sudden that email that took me 12 minutes to write, it can write it in 30 seconds and I just have to correct it slightly. Uh, the text that I need to translate quickly, it can translate it in four seconds and I just need to go and correct it. So it's definitely modifying the, the nature of my trade. Um, and it's, also performing functions that we thought were protected because originally uh, that this original concept the original no the older concept of ai let's say before sort of these large language models became available to the public was that oh anything involving analysis or creativity well that ai can't do that right like we still need creative people and what we're seeing is that no that's not true um, there are deep fakes out there and a lot of them are ai generated you know so it is being able to be creative so one of the research studies i looked at and this is the one that I, i'm going to focus on the most was it was a pew study and it talked not about oh what's the risk of jobs disappearing and so that's we can't we can't answer that what we can look at is in the list of job tasks, how exposed are those job tasks to artificial intelligence? And I thought that was an interesting angle because for us in our trades, when we look at that, um, the, the, the document that rapport sur l'analyse de la situation de travail, it gives a list of trade tasks. And it was like, oh, well, this is something maybe we could correlate and see like how, how much AI is being introduced into these trades or where can we see these links possibly, right? As opposed to just like the New York Times article that says, oh my gosh, watch out, office jobs are in danger, right? So in the Pew study, they said that there are 41 work activities that are common across all occupations. And of these 41 activities, tasks that involve physical activity or personal interactions are the least exposed to AI. And the ones that involve processing information and generating content are more exposed to AI. And once again, what exactly does exposed mean? It just means that, that, that there's gonna be more disruption there. We just don't know what that disruption is yet. So, I went into the, 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 the documents, the rapport de l'analyse de la situation de travail, and I pulled out the, the, <laughs> the tasks. So here are the tasks of the, of the, of the three, um, of the three uh, uh, programs, the three, the three professions. And without going into detail, looking at them, what I wanted to highlight was if we're looking at activities with high exposure to AI, such as processing information, evaluating information, thinking creativity, controlling, uh, uh, scheduling work, document recording. You look at this and you go back to here, it's like, wow, there's a lot of them that overlap. As opposed to, uh, there's the medium, let's look at the low ones, repairing and maintaining electrical systems, establishing caring relationships, those are in there as well, 
but they're definitely lower as far as the, the type of tasks that I'm doing. Not lower in they're less important, but lower in I spend less time doing them as far as tasks. So does that mean that these trades are more exposed to AI and possibly going to be more disrupted? We don't know. Because if we look back at automation, this last round of automation, it really hit the manufacturing sector enormously. Like think how robots. And sure, the road of robots definitely increased productivity, but they also increased the inequality between workers with different levels of education. So is that the same thing that's going to happen here? We don't know. Right now, the predictions are that anything entry level office work type stuff, it's going to become more efficient. Go back to the idea that in ChatGPT, it takes you 30 seconds to write an email, which before it took you 12 minutes or eight minutes or whatever it is, it just becomes way more efficient. And government agencies are starting to talk about this. So the US government is mapping out their bill of rights on AI. And the Canadian government has AI guiding principles for the Canadian, for the Canadian businesses and workforces. What, the Canadian businesses and the Canadian workforce. Let's do that. So with that, topic key takeaways. Recent advancements in AI are going to affect office and administrative tasks. We know that the interpersonal relationships and the physical activities are least exposed to AI, and we know that it's going to increase productivity. With that, this is where I would like to see those of you who are teaching these trades, and these is where those of you that are from these trades, where do you see this going? So what I'd like to do now is we stop the recording and now we're gonna open up the discussion. I'll take notes and I have a couple of guiding questions, but I'm gonna take notes and I'm gonna pull out sort of the key takeaways of what people are saying. Mark, go ahead, technology and teaching. Right. So when we designed the, the concept for the for Talk Cafe, we agreed that the RISI should bring up some resources linked to technology uh, to wrap up. And of course, I have to prepare this before I know who I'm going to talk to. And it's late, so I'm going to keep this super brief. In case you have never heard of them, um, I want to not recommend, but uh, tell you that the immerse.zone uh, 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 website is an AI powered image search tool where you can, of course, like every other image search, you can type a description of what you're looking for. And you always get this image that pretty much looks a bit like what you want, but has something wrong with it. There you can take that image that is almost right and copy paste it into that website. And it will give you a bunch of images that look like the one that you posted. So it can, it's not gonna generate a new image, but, and it usually, usually brings out um, images that are uh, under published under public licenses that you can actually use without infringing anybody's rights to intellectual property. So that's nice. The other one is eduaid.ai, and it's uh, an artificial intelligence designed specifically for lesson planning. Robin was talking about it with uh, before, but. The, it eliminates parts of the difficulty of the prompting correctly because it has category. Do you want to have an activity that's the, of this type? I, will, I won't describe it to, uh, totally to you, but if you want to use Explore AI for lesson planning, that would be a good tool. And we talked about uh, ChatGPT a lot. I will conclude my intervention by talking about the importance of privacy, Never uh, that the data that we put in AI is not ours anymore. So we have to be extremely careful with personal information, whether it's ours or uh, the students. Uh, concerns about ethical corporate greed, uh, usage of the data and things like that. And I think I'm gonna reach out to James and mention that we have to remember that AI is not smart that it will regurgitate the wrong thing if you put in the wrong queries. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so if you would like to continue this discussion, 
please go to vt.proceed.ca, sign up or log in and start a discussion thread. We will post, I always create a summary of this meeting and I post the summary in your uh, group uh, in your group discussion forum. So if you want to keep discussing there, go right ahead. Uh, there's also the handy dandy little chat feature here, another AI. So if you need help with the website or anything, you can text me there. It's, it goes to, to myself, my phone, or, or, or the uh, tech support guy's phone for proceed. Don't fill out the exit ticket. Next week, we are going to be talking about triangulation techniques and healthcare programs. So if anybody wants to come by for that. And I want to show you, so this, like here are all the resources that I looked at when I was designing this. So the New York Times article, Joe, you might, if you can get, like, I'm sorry, it's behind a paywall, but that New York Times article, like it explores a lot. It talks a lot about the privacy and the corporate greed, which is actually a really good point, Mark, that you brought up that I didn't touch at all but it does talk about that and what, uh, what businesses are doing because of that. And there's a sort of house proprietary uh, AI that's being developed. So for example, the chat GPT that is owned by uh, Random House, the publisher that was designed by chat GPT for them to be able to keep data inside their company. <laughs> you know? So this, this is really interesting. So there's three pages of resources here that you can go take a look at if you want to, uh, if you want to explore that a little bit more and that's it. Thank you so much for coming. I'm going to stop sharing and uh, this was great. Thank you very much guys. See you next time. <laughs>